the Lord Mount Zion hallelujah if you got a praise in your heart go ahead and get up with us join us as we praise God come on 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 don't get tired don't get tired don't get tired come on let's praise him Say for all that you've done, for all, all that, that you've done, done, all that you are, you're the righteous one. Let us go before the throne of grace. 
Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we just thank you. We love you, we praise you, Lord, we glorify you. We honor you, Father, Lord, for you are good and your mercy endure forever. We thank you, Father, for you are God. And you are good, Father. And you've blessed us, oh, Father, to be here another night, another day, just to give your name the praise, the honor, and the glory that you're worthy of having, Father. Lord, we ask you that you be moved in this service. Touch our pastor. The word is given out of his mouth, oh, Father. Let all of you and none of flesh come through. Father, touch our worship service that you be glorified and uplifted, oh, Father. Oh, Lord, touch us in our giving. Touch every individual life that's seeing this right now as we invoke and worship as we invoke in praise as we gather in your name today Lord to gather in your name just to worship your father continue to be with those that are bereaved oh father comfort them right now during this COVID-19 father those that are still afflicted in the body we're calling it out right now they are healed and by your stripes we're healed for we know that you are the author and the finisher of our faith continue to be with us oh father throughout this week and throughout the days coming up, Father, that we will continue to be examples before you, oh Lord, before the world, Father, that we'll be an examples, living epistles before them. Right now, in the name of Jesus, we praise your holy name. Be in this service, continue to be with us, oh Father, and we'll forever give your name the honor, the glory, and the praise. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. We're going to go towards our scripture right now, and that's to be found in Psalms 148, chapter 148, 1 through 10. And I'm going to be reading from out the New King James Version. If you would follow along with me. Lord, I cry out to you. Make haste to hear me. Give ear to my voice when I cry out to you. Let my prayer be set before you as incense. The lifting of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Set a guard, O oh Lord, over my mouth. Keep watch over the door of my lips. Do not incline my heart to any evil thing, to practice its wicked works with men who work iniquity. And do not let me eat of the delicacies. Let the righteous strike me. It shall be a kindness, and let them rebuke me. It shall be an excellent oil. Let my head not refuse it, for still my prayer is against the deeds of the wicked. Their judges are overthrown by the sides of the cliff. And they hear my words, for they are sweet. Our bones are scattered at the mouth of the grave, as when one plows and breaks up the earth. But my eyes are upon you, O God, the Lord. In you I take refuge. Do not leave my soul desolate. Keep me from the snares they have laid for me. For the traps of the workers of iniquity, let the wicked fall into their own nest while I escape safely. May the Lord have a blessing to the readers of his word. And we that are by faith may also be the doers of his word. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Come on. Get on up wherever you are. Praise the Lord, Gab. Praise the Lord, Mount Zion. Come on, get on your feet. If you're chasing after the Lord, come on, stand up. And let's give God some praise on tonight. Come on, come on.
the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, on behalf of Brea Apostolic Faith Temple in Detroit, Michigan, and Mount Zion Apostolic Church, Indianapolis, Indiana, we come to celebrate Jesus on today. I don't know about you, but I came up, hallelujah, here in the house of God just to give God some praise. Hallelujah, we would like to welcome you. we like to welcome our visitors. Hallelujah, our congregants, those that are watching us. Hallelujah, just because we got a, 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 a zeal in our spirits just to chase after God. Hallelujah, so for about 90 seconds, what we're going to do on behalf of our pastor, Bishop Leverway Gates Sr. Hallelujah, and First Family. We would like for you all to rise wherever you are. Hallelujah. Rise. Hallelujah. And give God some praise. And just tell somebody, I'm praising my way through. I'm praising my way through. Just to be close to him. I'm praising. Come on. Come on and praise him. Hey. Mount Zion and Greater Apostolic Faith Temple family. My name is Elder Dwayne Davis and I also would like to welcome and say praise the Lord and God bless you to all of the people that might be joining us virtually from around the world. I want you to know that you picked the right place to stay connected to. I I'm going to present to you what we call our spiritual vitamin. Just a few short words in the scripture to encourage you uh, that God is still in control. Would you turn with me quickly to the book of Matthew? Matthew chapter 7, verse 24. And it says, Therefore, whosoever hear these sayings of mine and do of them, I will liken them unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rains descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded on a rock. And everyone that hear these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. And the rains descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall. You know, I thought that this word was particularly profound based on the times that we're living in. Some of us who have been maybe in the church for a very long time, some of us who have said our prayers before God and have consecrated our lives and have tried our best to have a, a strong foundation in God, 
it's it's been a particularly challenging time for 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 some of us and why is that that that's probably because we don't have the answers we 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 don't quite understand we we're asking god what's going on and and and, and many of us many of us even in our churches we have experienced very personal pain with loved ones who have been ill and, and even gone on to be with the Lord. And, and I know if you're anything like me, you're crying out to God saying, God, what's happening? Why? Why is this happening? But the word I want to lift up to you today out of the word of God is this. I want you to be encouraged because I'm telling you something that we need to hold on to. Yes, the foolish man built his house on the sand, and the wise man built his house on the rock. But the Bible is very careful to lay out in detail that when the storm came, both the foolish man and the wise man experienced the exact same storm. They went through the same storm. For the foolish man and the wise man, the winds came, the rains came, and they beat upon the house. But when it was all said and done, although being in the storm is a hard place, although being in the storm is a rough place, it was the man who had his strength and foundation in God that was still standing. Listen, my brothers, my sisters, my family, and those of you listening all over the world, being founded in God does not exempt you from the storm. Many of us are going through even right now, but even though you go through the storm, if your anchor is in God, God, you cannot lose. The question I'm asking you today is when the storm passes, will you still be standing? Although we must experience the storm like other people, we won't come out like other people. I'm telling you, my sisters, my brothers, in the words of the songwriter, Make sure that your anchor holds and grips the solid rock. I want to encourage you that there will be glory after this. God bless you. I love you. And know this, when it's all over, we win. Hallelujah, hallelujah. How many know that we will win? We will win and there will be glory after this. There's a song that came to my mind that I got a reason to praise the Lord. When I was down and out, what? Jesus brought me out. I don't know about you, but you should have a reason to praise the Lord. If God woke you up this morning, you have a reason to praise the Lord. So wherever you are, come on, put those hands together. Come on, come on. Hey! When it was down and out, Jesus, he brought me out and I got a reason.
Church Gideonites. Amen. For this season, we are flowing in the spirit of Gideon, and we realize uh, uh, with our God, it's not about the numbers. Amen. It's just about who is vigilant and who is ready to serve the Lord. And we thank God uh, for those that are part of our Gideon group here in the church, representative of, uh, of both churches that form one great family, amen, uh, uh, up under my pastorate and L.W. Gates Ministries, and we're just so grateful for what the Lord is doing. I feel the Lord today, amen. This evening, there is just uh, uh, the presence of the Lord in the atmosphere, and we're so thankful, and we're so appreciative, and we're so grateful, first of all, for his presence, and then we're thankful for your presence. God bless uh, the members. Uh, that, uh, who I pastor both in Detroit and in Indianapolis. God bless you today. And uh, we certainly, as always, thank God for our visitors. We remind our members, we're encouraging you to invite members and guests to church. Start with your family members, then fare it out to your co-workers and your friends and your neighbors. Invite them to church. Where? At Great Apostolic Faith Temple and Mount Zion Apostolic Church. Tell them that uh, being sheltered in place has not closed worship down. Amen. You're worshiping from your home. We're here in the physical sanctuary. Uh, you're in your home, your workplace, your vehicle. You might be out taking a walk. I don't know what you're doing, but you're giving God some concerted time to worship him. And uh, we are here in the physical sanctuary simply to orchestrate and lead you. Amen. In our structured worship services. Now, I hope you're worshiping God all the time. Psalm said, I'll do what? I will bless the Lord at all times and his praises shall wear. They'll continually be in my mouth. And so we want you to just bless God always. Let worship be your lifestyle. Amen. And have moments of praise outside of services. But it is very important for us to come together. Forsake not what? The assembling of yourselves together. The Hebrew writer said, as the manner of some is. We're not those some. He said, but so much the more as we see the day approaching. And so, guess what? As we see the day approaching, even sheltered in place, on lockdown, uh, we're assembling ourselves together. Yes, we have to do it by virtual church, but God honors our effort. And uh, as always, I encourage you to lean in, participate. This, wherever you are, you are part of this virtual sanctuary. So lean in. Worship just as if you were physically present. I must remind you from time to time, and we salute again our visitors who are sharing with us tonight. Uh, I feel uh, compelled even this evening to remind you in our 6 p.m. service, uh, if you're visiting us for the first time and those perhaps who are visiting again, uh, we worship God uh, through the prism of, uh, of a Pentecostal apostolic uh, perspective. That is the flavor of our worship. That's why we're so bubbly and giddy. And that's why you saw me running around up and down this little aisle. You saw the praise team bouncing and jumping, not because uh, we're just insane crazy, 
we're just crazy about Jesus. And we're appreciative of what the Lord has done in our life. And uh, we have received a great deliverance from him, just as that lame man who was seated at the gate called Beautiful when Peter and John were going up for prayer, for their prayer hour. You remember, the Lord through them healed that man. And what did he do? He was so thankful, he went leaping and dancing. Honey, when God really brings you out, he'll put a real praise in your spirit. And that praise will be there so deeply until it will flow out uh, with expressive activities. That's what we as apostolic Pentecostals believe. And so when you see that in our service, I just want to explain to you where I come from. You'll see a hand go up. You'll see somebody jump. You'll see somebody else dance. You'll hear uh, the rhythmic beat of the drums and the uh, uh, the melding together of our band and energetic uh, worship music. You may hear someone break out and uh, there'll something will come out of their mouth that's kind of strange. That's us speaking in tongues as the Spirit of God gives to others. We're Pentecostals. Pentecostals speak in tongues. Amen. And yet we're saying at the same time. So God bless you tonight. Thank you for joining us. Um, I don't have a lot to share this evening. This morning, I dealt primarily with most of the pastoral things that I, as pastor, particularly during this time of pandemic, when uh, the vast majority of us can't come out to church. We're here with just a small band uh, attempting to honor the, uh, uh, the uh, order that was set in place by the governor, uh, both of Indiana and also of Michigan. We're trying to comport ourselves inside of his orders because uh, God instructed us as his people to obey the law. The only time we disobey man's law is when it conflicts with God's law and then we're willing to accept the penalty. But to the best of our knowledge, we're in comportment with what we have been told to do. That's why the sanctuary is empty and uh, it's just a small band of us here uh, conducting worship proper in the sanctuary so that we can uh, have this virtual e-church and minister to those of us to whom the Lord has called to minister. And uh, I want to thank God for the Gideon uh, group. Uh, uh, they can't clap their hands, but where you are, you can clap your hands. Uh, the band that's playing the music, the praise team that's singing, uh, uh, we have an element of our pastoral staff, our senior pastor, uh, associate pastor, uh, one of them in particular has been able to hang with us. We're glad that God has blessed him in body and mind and spirit, uh, enabling him to be here, Pastor Eugene Potter, one of our senior associate pastors. He's representing the rest of the pastoral staff. They'll be on when numbers allow and when they have a mind to be on and they're able. Uh, but uh, we're just working together. And because you don't see the other pastors, it doesn't mean they're not working. They're working behind the scenes. But we thank God for, for him. We thank God for our program uh, director, and uh, yes, I'm taking the time to do it because uh, I want to. That's why I'm doing it. And so I thank God for uh, Evangelist Morgan who orchestrates things. Clap your hands out there. Uh, just does a job. Just does a job. Uh, uh, Deacon Chapman, who is uh, our security person, head of security here at the church. He's here every Sunday and every church night with a gun, and we thank God. Thank God for him. He, he's bearing that gun in Jesus' name. And uh, 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 Brother Kyle been trying to do right. Hang with us. Ella Kyle McKissick, he's been in the room flavoring us with his anointing and presence and smile. And he's been jumping around when he's not cutting up. And we appreciate him. Our cameramen, I'm going to do it tonight. Our sound team, our control room people, you just don't know how much goes into place through this small band to put worship in place. Then I have administrative people coming, Sister Jones, Trustee Jones, Trustee Jennings uh, in Detroit on duty. Uh, trustee, uh, now she's not a trustee, but she's one of our ministers in the church, Mr. Catherine Daniel, uh, uh, Elder Rounds and team there, fielding calls, prayer team here, which, uh, which moves from week to week just as in Detroit. We praise God, Deacon Lee, who oversees the uh, maintenance and cleaning of our facility. Can I say that tonight? Can I thank God for those uh, that are helping us? I couldn't do this if they didn't help me. I don't know how to set up a camera. I'd be in this room talking to, talking to myself and Jesus. But thank God 
for help. And uh, you know what I want you to do? Because I'm not going to preach long. I want you, because uh, I, I, I believe you clapped your hands. I want you to hit the lines. And I want you to do this tonight. I want you to, to just put on that line. Praise God for the Gideon group. Come on, make some comments. Encourage them. They're coming out here week after week. Sunday, they come out here for six hours on Sunday. Amen. They could be home uh, doing other things, but they're here. Amen. Uh, sacrificing their food prep time. I'm doing that too. I got a roast on and uh, should be marinating. Yes, I'm going to talk about my food. I got that pecan, pecan ha, uh roast. You check out the Brazilian steakhouse, but they can't cook it better than me. And it's going down. When I get home, I've got a marinade. It's going down. I keep threatening to show my stuff. I may show it tonight. Who knows? Hang on. Hang on and see what the Lord will reveal. Hit that line. Come on. I want the Gideon group to be encouraged. Come on. Send it in. Say thank God for the Gideon group. I'm telling you, thank God. They're not trying to take glory, but I just want them to know they're appreciated. Amen. And after I say that, I appreciate you. All right. The Lord bless you. Now, after tonight's service, hope you hang to the end. This service is designed to be short. Uh, I want you to meet me Tuesday night for our Indianapolis Bible study. Where? In virtual church at 7 p.m. And then on Wednesday, we will run again my Tuesday night class for our Detroit Bible study. What time? 7 p.m. I have to push you to prayer and fasting. Remember to connect with your connect groups in both churches. Uh, visitors, I said I wasn't going to do too much pastorally, but I guess I am doing that. So bear with us, visitors. We'll be back to you. But um, uh, uh, we want to fast. Great Apostolic, Mount Zion, everybody. Uh, I'm saying that as your senior pastor, and I speak to others who may be worshiping with us that are part of the Pentecostal Churches of the Apostolic Faith International. I say this to you as your current presiding bishop. We want you to fast with us on Wednesday from midnight Tuesday and or whatever time you retire until 4 p.m. If you can't go totally through in the fast. Now everybody can drink water. You're released to drink water till 4, uh, but otherwise it's absolute. But if you can't go absolute, find a way to sacrifice. Medical conditions and such like may prevent you from doing an absolute fast. You must use wisdom, but you can find a way to sacrifice so we can be unified and all of us can pray at 6 a.m. in the morning, just one half hour. Get on that call. We've been around 400. I want us to bump it up this week to 500. Tell your pastor about this prayer if he's not aware. And you get on there with your fellow members. And then don't forget, we have another prayer Saturday morning between our two churches that I oversee a senior pastor, 8 a.m. to 8.30, just 30 minutes. Join us on that prayer. And remember, you don't have to be a member of either church. You don't have to be a member of praise God of, uh, of, uh, of uh, the PC of AF to get on any of these calls. Just be a, a, a person that believes in the power of prayer and will welcome your prayers with us. I meant to say something this morning. Uh, if you're looking for a church home, Mount Zion Apostolic Church in Indianapolis, Indiana is a great place to belong. Great Apostolic Faith Temple in Detroit, Michigan is a greater place to belong and a, a wonderful place to belong. And we hope uh, you'll be a part of our church families. If you're looking for a church home, you may not even live in our cities. And right now you don't have a place of affiliation. You can be a virtual member. We're having virtual church. So why not be a virtual member? Come, uh, 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 send us a message. Let us know that you want to be a part of our church. You can call the line right now. If you want to be a member, you can call that uh, the line designated for prayer and become a member of our church and now I'm going to do something again a little pastoral I have to do stuff while I'm thinking about it I want uh, evangelist Morgan to uh, send me a message and just say speak with Deacon Matthews about virtual church and uh, that will jog my memory Lord let me remember something really important while I'm talking to you thank you for your patience and putting up with me as I meander uh, just a bit we'll call it pastoral meanderings and I thank you for listening to me I thank you for being patient with me understanding how I must flow and operate in times like these uh, God bless you we're going to move on with our service right now and uh, what we want to do is have uh, our tithe and our offerings 
We receive tithing offerings uh, at each of our weekly services. And we would like you at this time to participate. This morning, I told uh, my members how much I appreciate them. And not just our members proper, but there have been others who have been sowing in. Some, I suppose, without a church home, have even been tithing in uh, to one or the other church. We appreciate you. And so tonight, um, I want to ask you to be liberal again. Lately, I haven't been giving a suggested amount. I'm not going to do that tonight either. Uh, there'll be times when perhaps I will ask for a specified amount. Everyone knows what the tithe is and uh, we know what a free will offering is. So we ask you to be led by the Holy Spirit. Let us follow the scripture and let us follow the promptings of the Holy Spirit in our heart as we prepare to give at this time. Uh, before I pray, I want us to say the affirmation. We always say whenever it is tithe and offering time when the sanctuary is full of worshipers. Uh, so you'll have to repeat it in your part of the virtual sanctuary as we are, are amalgamated together in the Holy Ghost. And so together we say we are wealthy, we are what? Prosperous, and we are heirs of the kingdom of God. And see how inclusive that affirmation is? It's for everybody. It's for Great Apostolic Faith Temple. It's for Mount Zion Apostolic Church. It's really for everybody who believes God's word and is participating with us right now in the support of kingdom ministry. One more time, say with me, we are wealthy, we are prosperous, and we are heirs of the kingdom of God. Now, um, uh, I want you to uh, just bow your head for a moment. Allow me to pray with you. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you, thank you, thank you. Lord, uh, before I thank you for this offering, I again want to thank you for the Gideon group. And I appreciate, Lord, you motivating your people to just send in a comment of support and a comment of care, a comment of appreciation for those who help us to carry forth this ministry. Lord, I'm doing it according to how uh, I feel led in my spirit, and I believe I'm doing it in accordance with how you would have me do it during this time of, of us being sheltered in place. Um, and so I ask you to continue to bless me and this group. Give us strength, cover us with your blood, no ailment, no sickness. Lord, we're using wisdom by practicing social distancing and we're doing the things that the doctors and the medical authorities and government authorities have suggested that we do and we'll continue to do that, Lord. But even then, we know that we need you to be our ultimate keeper. And so keep us so that we can minister to your people. And as always, Lord, we're submitted to your will, whatever you say. But one thing we do know, Lord, you will not let the devil get to victory. And so keep us flowing as you would have us flow. And now, Lord, bless every tither, bless every giver, and uh, be with us and be with your people now. Bless their homes and bless their finances. Bless Mount Zion's finances. Bless Great Apostolic's finances and all who tithe and give. And Lord, I don't just pray for the two churches I pastor. Every church in the Pentecostal churches of the Apostolic Faith International. Provide for them spiritually and financially. And then Lord, don't stop it at the boundaries of the PC of AF. Bless your people everywhere. Every organization, every denomination, Lord, that is covenant, covenant with you, serving you to the best of their ability. Bless them and stabilize finances and spirituality. These blessings we ask in Jesus' name. And together we say amen and amen. Now I want you to give. And uh, we're going to do most of our giving primarily virtually. We want you to pay very close attention to the screens. Uh, Detroit and Indianapolis, you know uh, what to do. You know which uh, side of this chart should inform uh, how you give. Both churches off offer the Givelify app, you can give to both churches through Givelify. Mount Zion is on East 38th Street in Indianapolis. Great Apostolic is on West 4th Street in Detroit. Make sure you match that address. 4900 East 38th Street, 4735 West 4th Street, Detroit, Michigan. 4900 East 38th Street, Indianapolis. Match that with the church. Cash app, you see how to give by way of cash app. Our handle uh, is where you go. Uh, follow that. 
You want to, you can give directly through our website. Uh, you see uh, the web address of both churches, and then there's a designated number you can call uh, if you just want to talk to a person to help you through the giving process. Call those numbers. As you see them on the screen, if you're a member of uh, Mount Zion, you gravitate to 317. If you're a member of Great Apostolic, you, you uh, gravitate to that 313 number. Note that number and call. Someone will service you right now. If you're not a member, you can still send a love offering if the Lord puts it in your spirit to do so. You don't have a church home. Uh, either church is a great church to tithe in, to give in, and we appreciate uh, your blessings. You're helping our ministry. Um, you're helping me. And so we appreciate whatever God would put in your spirit. Now give your attention to the screen right now for a brief announcement. And uh, after that announcement is played, our uh, beautiful worship team will come back with another amen uh, selection. Uh, and uh, they'll be brief. And guess what? I'm going to be brief and we'll be on our way for the evening. God bless you. Hey Mount Zion, hey Greater Apostolic Faith Temple. I said what is up? It's Curtis Murray here. Hello everybody, it's Shonda Golden. Listen, let me do this like Bishop. Well, greetings and praise the Lord. This is your neighborhood praise and worship leader, Brother Brandon. <laughs> no one can deny that we are living in challenging times right now. That these are also extraordinary and exciting times. Joe, this COVID-19 has us all fearful and all out of sorts. Be not afraid. Be not afraid. Because that says I. <laughs> God is greater than COVID-19. Listen, I'm out here shouting all along because we have to practice social distancing. This moment also yields great opportunity for maximum impact. I wanted to tell you guys that I love you. Hey, look, I came on here just to tell y'all that you're favored, you're loved, you're blessed, you're appreciated. We are one. One church. One church. One church. One church. One, one church. church. One church. One church. Stay connected. Let's stay connected. Stay connected. Stay connected. It's going to be amazing. I guarantee. Remember, one church. Stay connected. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We're just going to worship him a little bit before the word comes. Hallelujah. How many want to worship the Lord? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on and worship him with us.
technology we can yet meet though it be virtual church with the right mindset and with a worshipful spirit virtual church can be spiritual church and we join together in the spirit for your word said by one spirit are ye all baptized into one body and so here we are tonight in a 6 p.m. evening service Oh, the devil thought he had us because he locked us in our homes and we couldn't get gathered out because of what is going on. But Lord, you still made a way. And so we thank you for the mind to come together in evening worship together. We can't see each other necessarily with our eyes, but we pick, we pick one another up in the spirit. While we pick each other up, Lord, we pray each other's strength. Pray each other's encouragement. Now help us as we part of your word in these next few minutes. Give this preacher economy of speech. Cover we 
with your blood. Open up our ears, quicken our spirit. Save those that need saving. Strengthen those that need strengthening. Edify all of us who are in your body. Reclaim those that have strayed away. And Lord, uh, most every time I pray, I always ask you for your healing power. So touch the sick and afflicted among us, those hospitalized, those at home. Touch the bereaved. Cover with your blood. Now help me, Lord, to minister. And help me and all of us to hear. In Jesus' name, amen. So bow down. So bow down. Before you take your seat, say it, say it with the praise team. You got to do it in your spirit. So one last time before we read God's word. Open your mouth and say. find us in the Psalter, the 27th Psalm. God bless you, our worship team. 27th Psalm, the 13th verse, a very familiar verse. It says, I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word, for we are the hearers, and by faith the doers on today. I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. It's my second reading. Those that are familiar with my ministry, you know I always read a third time because there's nobody here but who? Us. All right. I had fainted. Are you saying it with me? Come on, open your mouth in your worship space. Say it aloud. When you recite God's word, it's internalized better. Say it aloud with me. I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. And I want to talk to you very briefly. I don't think I'm going to use even the allotted time or scheduled time for me in this evening service to say what I want to say. Um, but I just want you to focus on this verse and... Uh, I want you uh, to just wrap your arms around the words that I'm going to give you. And uh, these words are, I still believe that I will. I still believe that I will. Now, if I could hear you, I would want you to repeat those words with me. And so I still want you to repeat them. I, I believe the Lord has let me pick stuff up in the spirit just as he's allowing you to. And so let's say it together. I still believe that I will. One more time. I still believe that I will. Time won't permit me this evening to go into all of the intricacies of this Psalms. Those that know me, they know that I'm a lover of the book of Psalm uh, because Psalm is, is so mighty. It's so majestic. It's a poetic book. Um, in truth, it's a song book. Uh, yes, uh, poetic and song, poetic and song, because the lyrics of 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 hymns, uh, in truth, are are poetic, and they are written to inspire us. They're written. I'll tell you something else. You know, um, they're written for repetition, and that's why we read uh, the psalm so often. You notice. Most churches, uh, even our church, but not limited to our church, we use the psalm as a part of, of our devotion. We use the psalms as a part of our devotion, most often at the beginning of services, though we utilize other scripture. You'll hear psalms a little more often salted throughout because the, uh, the, the essence of the psalter, psalter referencing the entire book of psalms, is is one of 
devotion, one of worship. Let me up the ante. It's a particular compartment of worship. It's one of praise. And these psalms, some emphasize praise more than others. Some are, are uh, meditative in their essence, and others, all uh, others are more instructive. But all of them are hymns, and all of them are intended uh, to to be songs of praise and songs of worship and songs of focus. This particular 27th Psalm uh, is one to me uh, that falls underneath that classification. There are very few people that are not familiar with this Psalm. I dare to say that after the 23rd Psalm, it very well might be uh, one of the most quoted <coughs> Psalms in the entire book of Psalms or hymnal of Psalms. There are others I'm sure that compete, but I think in our circles, perhaps the words of this Psalm are words that I hear most often after the 23rd Psalm. You look at this Psalm, it's, it's so interesting uh, how uh, it's made up and please bear with me these few moments. Um, I promise by God's help to be brief. You look at this Psalm and, and you'll see that uh, it is wondrously constructed. It is a psalm um, that has militaristic overtones. I might call it in one sense, and, and Bible scholars might get me, but I'm going to call it in one sense a kingly psalm. And uh, that perhaps could be applied to most psalms, uh, because, or many psalms, should I say, because many psalms have been penned by King David. This one uh, uh, in the inscription at the beginning is one that evidences that this psalm is, is attributed to King David. And uh, when psalms are attributed to David, we have the liberty to fit it into the context of David's life and the context of David's activities. David, we know, is a man, uh, the Bible describes him as a man, what, after God's own heart. I won't go into the intricacies of that designation, but what I will say, uh, certainly part of what it implies is that David was on a level of intimacy with his God. He wasn't just in office, but he was in office underneath God, connected with God. You know, there's something to be said about experiencing elevation but yet remaining connected to the one who elevated you. Sometimes people forget that I didn't make myself. The psalmist, David himself, reminded us elsewhere, the psalmist said, know ye not that it is who? The Lord that hath made us, and not what? We ourselves. And I'm sure he was speaking of us in our corporeal essence, and he was also speaking of us with our tripart nature, body, soul, and spirit. But I think those words are applicable to every rung of success that we may ascend to in life. Wherever you go, wherever you arise, remember, uh, I didn't take those steps by myself. God is the one that gave me the strength to go up each step, to journey to the place that he would have me to be. And so here we have a king who's yet writing psalms. Here we have a king who has been elevated. He's gone from being a shepherd boy. And oh yes, he was praising God as a shepherd boy. Matter of fact, he testified about the goodness of God as a shepherd boy. Amen. His deliverances and God's covering. Uh, but now that he's king, what is he going to do? You know, some people, when they arrive, they forget. Some people, when they arrive, they're too good. <laughs> you know, to praise God like they used to praise God. But that wasn't the case with David. David, even when once he was anointed king, was a, a mighty praiser of God. He still wrote songs. But not only did he write songs, uh, I don't want to get deep there, amen, but David enjoyed the songs that he wrote. David uh, enjoyed giving God glory. Oh my, I have to say this, David enjoyed euphoric worship of God. His was not stayed. His was not uh, a worship, amen, that was so regimented until he felt required 
uh, to come into comportment with that which was expected of kings because kings, of course, were expected to be dignified. But David was, was so blessed and, 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 and David was so full of thanksgiving. And why was he full of thanksgiving? He always held in his mind remembrances. He always remembered the day <laughs> and time of small things. Y'all ain't hearing what I'm saying. When, when you get big, always remember small. When you grow large, always remember uh, when you didn't always have what you have now. And David, uh, he was so grateful. And even as king, he was so grateful because he knew that it was the Lord uh, that, 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 that carried out the continuity of his kingship. Because he knew if God made him king, God could strip him of being king. But even, even as he continued to be king, whenever God did something for him, David uh, took time to tell God, thank you. And so it was, you remember that time real quick when, 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 uh, when Israel under the auspices of David was able to recover the Ark of the Covenant and you remember how glad David was and I may come back to that before I close in these few minutes. He was so happy, amen, until he began to dance through the streets of Jerusalem and David had one of those stuffy wives, one of those arrogant wives who who thought he should act like a king. What does a king act like? What, what truly uh, uh, should someone who's been elevated by God act like? Uh, you, you know, never let man and his protocols and rules control your praise and your worship. Amen, amen. The, the worship of God is outside of the confines of the rules of men. And David broke the rules of kingly decorum and the Bible says he danced through the streets of Jerusalem to the shame and dismay of his wife. He danced, how hard did he dance? He danced until he danced out of his kingly garments. Now don't get that twisted, you know, when the Bible says he danced uh, out of his clothes. See, uh, I'm gonna go back to the scripture the old mothers used to quote, cause some people can go too far. And when they went too far, the old mothers would pull you and snatch you and sit you down. And then they grab that scripture and they say, boy, girl, the Holy Ghost don't act unseemly. That would be their phrase. And so there's a, there's a boundary. You, you don't get naked to praise God. Y'all ain't gonna say nothing. I could go somewhere else with that. I'm almost, I almost told you, you don't come to church naked to praise God. But, but I ain't gonna do that either. Amen. But, but, but he got happy. Amen. And he, he danced out of the outer garments of his kingly attire. You know what? I think David had a mindset. I owe God so much praise. I don't need nothing on that's gonna hinder me from blessing the name of the Lord. And so he danced out of it. And his wife, Micah, she was infuriated. In her mind, she was humiliated. What does this look like to everybody else? And she tried to tell David, get somewhere and get still. You're not acting right. But David, if I can paraphrase uh, his, 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 his verbiage back to her, you don't tell me how to praise God. You know why? Because you don't know like I know what the Lord has done for me. Oh, I, I, I got to slow down because I'm getting happy. And I tell you why I'm getting happy right now. Amen. I'm thinking about what God did for me. Amen. My name ain't David. My name is Lambert. And let me tell you something. As much as I love David, David can't praise God for me. Because David don't know like I know what the Lord has done for me. Has any of you, have any of you been blessed by God? Have any of you been brought a long ways by God? If God has brought you a long way, you ought to thank him. Let me tell you something else. If God has kept you, you ought to thank him right now for having kept you. You ought to praise him right now in your sanctuary because God has kept you. God has been your preserver. God has been your keeper. Somebody, amen, ought to shout out right now. The Lord has kept me. If he's kept you, put it on the comment line. Amen. Say it with your fingers and say it with your mouth. The Lord has kept me. Get that word out. If you're not ashamed, put it on that line and say, the Lord has kept me. The Lord has been my preserver. The Lord has been my strength. God has been my keeper and I will praise him. I'll praise him with the word of Jude now unto him that is able to keep me. Thank God from falling. I'm standing.
because of him. I'm preserved because of him. And so that was David's testimony. And that's why he fanned out with so many psalms in the Psalter. And you'll find him worshiping God, thanking God, blessing God. This psalm is one that David penned as I get ready to close in the next few moments. This psalm is one that flowed up from the memories of David. And he sat down one day and he wrote out this song of praise and he said I want people to sing it sometime sometime listen in lean in sometime you got to memorialize your praise you better hear what I'm saying you got to memorial what do you mean memorialize your praise David put it on paper amen because I want future generations to know how good God has been the Lord just told me to tell parents you need to start telling your children about the goodness of the Lord memorialize memorialize your praise sometimes the reason our children aren't worshipers like they ought to be is because we don't tell children about our journey sometimes we need to let the children know it ain't always been like it is amen it ain't always been for your mom and your daddy like it is you need to tell them from whence God has brought you memorialize that praise if you don't write it on paper write it in their heart tell them day in and tell them day out I remember the testimonies of my parents because they told me about the goodness of the Lord and where God brought them from. And David had the privilege of writing out his psalm. David had the privilege of memorializing his praise and he writes it here in this psalm. This psalm, this psalm, as we get ready to close, it moves in three pieces, three pieces in motion. As you walk through this psalm, it goes from affirmation to prayer and from prayer Back to affirmation. Catch what I'm saying. Write that down. Put it in the comment line so somebody else can catch it. Affirmation to prayer. Back to affirmation. Say it with me. Open your mouth. Affirmation to prayer. Back to affirmation. Say it one more time. Affirmation to prayer. Back to affirmation. What do I mean about affirmation? I mean he affirms what God is to him. Sometimes you got to affirm it. Amen. You got to affirm it in your mind because the devil will bring seeds of doubt. What am I affirming in my mind? I'm affirming that I have faith in God. You know what? I feel all right right now. How do you feel? I feel pretty good in my spirit. I feel like going on. I feel like giving God the glory. Did y'all hear what I'm saying? I'm interrupting my message to tell you when I think of the goodness of Jesus, and all that is done for me. My soul cries out hallelujah. That's sometimes, sometimes that's why I can't preach a message straight through. Because while I'm preaching, God gives me a flashback. While I'm talking to you, something walks across my mind about the goodness of the Lord. And I don't have time to tell you about it. Because somebody would say, Pastor, you're not focused. And so sometimes when I holler, amen, I'm hollering. Because back in the back side of my mind. I'm remembering a door that God opened, a way that God made. I'm remembering how God spared me, amen, when I was at death's door. Y'all ain't hearing what I'm saying. And when I almost, thank God, was destroyed. And so sometime I got to talk about it. David talks about it here, and he affirms his faith. He affirms his faith. Y'all hear what I'm saying? So you got to affirm your faith. You got to affirm what God is doing in your life. And David affirms it as he opens up this psalm. And he says, the Lord, the Lord, what is the Lord? The Lord is my light. Excuse me for hollering. I told you when I holler, I'm hollering because God is good. And even when it ain't in my conscious mind, y'all ain't going to walk with me tonight. I have taught myself so much to be a worshiper until worship dwells in my subconscious. Y'all ain't hearing what I'm saying. Worship is so deep. See, you got to practice worship until worship becomes melded with your soul and with your spirit. Oh, out up it. You got to be so deep into worship until your body is trained to worship God. Trained body. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. You got to train body, soul, and spirit to be a worshiper of God. Well, I might have said, oh, that's too deep. You're too deep, preacher. Yeah, where, where, where you get that from? I got it from Thessalonians, where Paul said, I pray that God will sanctify you. How? Holy 
W-H-O-L-L-Y. Holy, what do you mean? I want you to thoroughly be sanctified. Sanctified in every compartment. Sanctified in your body. Sanctified in your spirit. Sanctified in your soul. What are you saying? He said, I want all three parts of you to be reserved for me. And you can get it so deep and etch it so deep into the depths of your soul and spirit and with your body. You can practice worshiping God so much until when one part of you forgets, the other part will remember. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. Amen. When my body forgets to praise God, my spirit will praise him. When my spirit forgets, my soul will praise him. Y'all ain't walking with me tonight. And sometime, sometime, you can get in a low place where your soul and your spirit don't want to give God glory, but because you taught your body to practice to worship God. Sometimes your hand will go up before your mind gets on it, but because your body makes a response, y'all ain't gonna talk to me. It drags your soul and your spirit into the praise. You need to open up your mouth and say somehow or another, I will always give God glory. Somehow, y'all ain't talking to me. You're going to make me take my glasses off. Somehow or another, I will always give God praise. Put it on that line. Put it on that line. Train yourself right now with that affirmation. Put it in that comment text. I'm talking to you. Put it in that comment text. Somehow or another. I will always praise God. Somebody mix it up and say my soul will praise him. Somebody else mix it up and say my spirit will praise him. Somebody else mix it up on that line and say my body will praise him. And then there'll never be a time when a part of me is not giving God glory. But don't mess around and let all of me praise him. Don't mess around. Oh, y'all. Don't mess around and let me click body, soul, and spirit at the same time. Devil, you better get nervous when all of me go to calling on God. Oh, I got to tell you, David affirms himself. I'm getting ready to close. The clock is ticking down. I'm getting ready to close. He affirms, the Lord is my light and my, my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Sometimes you got to talk to yourself. In the worst of Ikabasaya, in the worst of time, you must affirm it. In, in Oh yeah, I got to bring it home to us. David said it in his day. Can I say it in our day? With COVID-19 running everywhere, with nobody knowing what to do. The president don't know what to do. His helpers don't know what to do. The doctors and medicine people don't know what to do. The governor don't know. The mayor don't know. We may as well tell the whole truth. We don't know. Preacher don't know. Pastor don't know. But I know a God who does know. And he said, he said this, I will affirm it. I will affirm it. And the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord, the Lord, the Lord. I have faith even with fear. I have faith with fear standing over yonder. I still have faith. And not only that, devil, the Lord is the strength of my life. Y'all ain't talking to me. Amen. Of whom shall I be afraid? In other words, the Lord is the, is the refuge and the stronghold of my life. I can go and hide in him. He said, when the wicked, even what? My enemies and my foes, you better run with me. I'm getting ready to close. Came upon me to eat of my flesh. Y'all ain't hear me. Guess what happened? God tripped him up every time. And what all, almost was, it didn't take place. What almost could have happened, it didn't happen. Sometimes you got to remind yourself of that. You got to rehearse it in your memory. You got to affirm it and put it in the atmosphere. Oh, I wish I had somebody out there that would say right now, it could have been another way. It could have been, not just before COVID, but in the midst of COVID, it could have been another way. You could be dead. You could be in the hospital. You could be on a respirator. Oh, but God, but God, but God, but God, don't y'all make me shout. He's affirming, he's affirming, he's affirming. Somebody say affirm, affirm, affirm. That's why, that's why you got to learn how to open up your mouth. You got to open up your mouth and affirm before it takes place, affirm. Before it happens, affirm. When nothing's going on, affirm. Oh, can I get some help here? He said, though a host should encamp against me. He said, my heart shall not fear. Oh, you got to tell yourself that. Even, even when your heart ain't there, you got to rehearse your heart in it. Can y'all hear what I'm saying? You got to say, I'm not afraid while you're afraid. 
Y'all ain't hearing what I'm saying. Wow, you're afraid. Some folk, they condemn faith speak, but that's because you don't understand the word of God. Some folk refuse to participate in affirmation. I don't say affirmation. That's why you ain't got no victory. Amen. You got to open up your mouth. You got to say it till you believe it. You got to decree it till it happens. You got to speak it till it takes place. Uh, can I get a witness in the come out? I dare you to say it. 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 Put it on the line. Open up your mouth. Put it in the comments. My heart, my heart shall not fear. The war should rise against me. Can I get a witness in here? The war, the war, that this is a king talking. He's using militaristic terms. David was not just a king. David uh, was a leader in the army. He was a captain in Saul's army. Oh, and since he was king, he could be his own general. Y'all ain't saying what I'm saying. He didn't just talk about fight. He went to the fight. Y'all ain't saying nothing. And he said, though a war should rise against me. I like how he talks. He says, in this, in this, in this, will I be confident. I want the devil to be affirmed, not just me. I want the devil to be affirmed that I'm still confident. Your warfare has not shaken my confidence. Cast not away your confidence, which have great recompense of reward. Oh, devil, you don't have me defeated. I, I know you think you got me surrounded by alien and hostile forces getting ready to close. I know you, get, you think you got me boxed in by enemies on every side. I know you, oh, I know, I know, I know you think COVID-19 uh, has come and you've written me off. You've written the church off. You've written God's people off. Amen. You got us twisted. You thought you would shut church down by shutting us in the house. You thought you would cut our praise off, amen, by shutting us in the house, amen. But you got us twisted. You say, I'm gonna get those saints because I'm not gonna let them go to the physical building. They can't get to 4900 East 38th Street in Indianapolis. They can't get to 49, to, 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 to 4735 West 4th Street in Detroit, Michigan. I heard you, devil. You thought you cut off these other saints that don't belong to either church. They can't get to 12 South Ashland in Chicago, Illinois. Amen. Where Bishop Warren J. Hoard is the pastor. I heard you. 2900 East, 2900 West Chicago Boulevard. Great Clinton Street, Greater Bethlehem Temple in Detroit. I heard you, devil. You thought you ran a game on us. 1205 Robinson Street in Jackson, Mississippi. Ah, you said, you said, yeah, glory. Don't you mess with me, devil. I remember 12 South Elm Street, amen, in, in Cincinnati. I know you done moved on up to a bigger church, amen, over on ass, around ass street, but it don't matter. It don't matter. You, you got me twisted, devil. You thought if you kept me out of the physical building that you had worked your game on me, but that's because you never understood me. Let me give you another affirmation. It was never the building that I was longing for. One thing have I desired of the Lord. And that will I seek after that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. And I hear you saying, oh no, I work my game. You can't get to the building, but you got me twisted. The building was just a, a, a physical structure for the physical body to come together. But you, you got the body twisted. We're more than physical. We are spiritual. When we can't come together physically, we can still come together spiritually. And we were not seeking the building. The building was just a meeting place. But since you locked us up, we had to go to a next level of practice. And guess what? We found out we can meet God right where we are. We don't long for a building. We long for his presence. We long, we long, we long for the presence of God as the heart after the water broke my soul I wish I had can I get somebody open your mouth and say I'm thirsty for God I'm hungry for God all I need is his presence he come I he come I have Sunday he come I my mama see her oh devil you got me twisted I'm still affirming 
I'm still affirming. You think COVID got me down, but you don't know. I found out when I get in his presence. Guess what? When I'm in his presence, he said, in the time of trouble, he shall hide me I, in his pavilion. I got a shelter. I got a shelter in the presence of God. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. God got a secret place for me. Oh, that's why I'm standing. People looking at me, wondering why I'm making it. The next door neighbors can't figure it out why I come outside every day with a smile on my face. Why do I take my walk, whistling sweet wonder, walking down the street? He that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the hall mighty and then then I'm getting ready to close he said and now shall mine head be lifted up somebody lift your head up lift your head up right now now shall my head be lifted up above my enemies round about me somebody shout glory because in his tent and I like this in his tent in his tent, I'm affirming still. In his tent, I will offer sacrifices and shouting of joy. That's what we're doing right now. We're in, the Gideon group is in the physical building, but you're in that secret place. You're in that tabernacle. And in that tabernacle, you can offer sacrifices and shouting of joy. And then he said, I will sing. Yes, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Praise him. Praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him. Jesus is worthy, worthy of all praise. Then, then it shifts as I get ready to close. Can I work these two minutes? Somebody say work these two minutes. Y'all ain't talking, work these two minutes. He goes to praying. He punctuates the affirmation with praise. See, you affirm, but then you deal with reality. I affirm, that's my faith talk. I'm not crazy when I say I, I'll be wealthy and I'll be prosperous. That's my faith talk. I'm going to make it. That's my faith talk. I'm healed. That's my faith talk. But then I got to deal with reality. How do I deal with reality? I work reality with prayer. I affirm my faith talk by calling those things that are not as though they already were. But I pray in real time. And in my real time prayer, I pray about where I am. And so he shifts. And somebody thought that they were clever in studying the song. I wish y'all would hit the line and say, take five more minutes. Hit that line and say, take five more minutes. I'm trying to land this plane. Did you say it? Say it to me. If you, if you say it, I'll do it. If you say, hold on and take five, Bishop, I'll do it. As I get ready to wrap it up, he said, he's prayed. And, and somebody said, there's something wrong because there's such a shift. There's a shift in the prayer. They said somebody went and stitched two, two different psalms together. But that's not the case. That's, the, that's not the case. This is a man who's going, who's going through a process. He affirmed, but the devil was still on his trail. And so he said, I got to stop and pray and call on God. And so he says, hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice, have mercy also upon me and answer me. I need somebody to hit the line and say, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy with the plague in the land, with the enemy in the land. Lord, have mercy. You better pray mercy. You better pray mercy. You ain't no better than nobody else. I'm a bishop and I pray mercy. I'm a presider and I pray mercy. I'm a pastor and I pray mercy. I've been saved 50 years, but I still need the mercy of God. I haven't dotted every I. I haven't crossed every T and the church needs to be careful. Don't just put this on the world. Don't just put this this disease on the world or oh, this disease is talking to the church too and the church needs to open up our mouth. We need to repent. We need to say God have mercy. Open your mouth and say Lord have mercy. Have mercy. Have mercy. Have mercy on me. Have mercy on my wife. Have mercy on my husband. Have mercy on my children. Have mercy on my house. Oh God have mercy have mercy and answer me and when thou saidest seek ye my face my heart said unto thee thy face Lord will I seek he said God I got the message and that's why I'm praying right now you told me and you revealed to me in the midst of of this scourge in the midst of of this uh, pandemic you have 
shown me and you have reiterated to me that all I ever wanted you to do was seek me and I had to let a pandemic come into the world so I could remind the world that they need me. I wanted to remind President Putin in Russia that you need me. I wanted to remind, I can't get no help. I can't get no help. I wanted to remind the president of China, you need me. I wanted to tell the great nations on the earth, India, you're the second most populous nation in the world and you practice, you practice Hinduism and, and everything else, but he said, you need me. You don't need no cow, you need me. Y'all, I need, you need me. Mr. Trump, it ain't about what you talking about. You doing press conferences every day talking about disinfectants. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. You don't need a disinfect. You need me in the presence of the Lord. There's fullness of joy. There's healing in his wings. Oh, he prayed, he prayed, he prayed. He said, God, I got it. Give me another chance. I dare you to say, give me another chance. Give me another chance. We messed it up, Lord. We thought this gospel was money. We thought this gospel was houses. We preached prosperity messages when we should have preached Jesus. We preached stuff and things when we should have preached Jesus. I'm talking about us preachers. I'm talking about us bishops. I'm talking about us pastors. I'm talking about us on television. Big television preachers. Little television preachers. We thought it was a message of prosperity. But I heard the Lord say, Say, I'm calling my church back to me. I'm calling my church back to my face. Open up your mouth and say, God, I seek your face. He said, hide not thy face far from me. Put not thy servant away in anger. He's getting ready to bring it to an end. And in his prayer, he says, Lord, hide not thy face. Don't hide your face far from me. Put not thy servant away in thine anger. He said, thou has been my help. I need somebody <clears throat> to pick up a pen and, and hit, the, hit the line and say, the Lord has been my help. Can you hear me, Dr. Farmer? The Lord has been my help. Uh, it's all right. Somebody say it another time. I'm getting ready to close. Um, bring this message to a close. The Lord has been my help. He said, leave me not neither forsake me. He's praying as I close. Oh God of my salvation. And then I like what he said. Can I get a witness in here? Somebody open up your mouth and shout glory. <clears throat> shout glory. He began to close his prayer and worship God for his faithfulness. Uh, excuse me tonight, uh, but I feel like tuning up for a minute. Uh, I don't believe I've tuned up. Uh, thank God since we've been on the air, but I feel a little help in the room. I feel a little goodness of God in the room when I think of the goodness of Jesus uh, and all that is done for me. So cries out hallelujah. Praise God for saving me. He closed out his prayer with adoration and said, when my mother and my father forsake me, he said, then the Lord will take me up. And then he told God as he signed off in the prayer, teach me thy way, O Lord. Lead me. Somebody open up your mouth and say, lead me. Lead me. Lead me. Lead me, Lord. Don't lead me down the pathway of confusion. Don't lead me down the road of treachery and disaster. He said, lead me in a plain and even path because of my enemy. Keep me from my enemy. Keep me from my adversary. Keep me, thank God, from the disease. Deliver me not over to the will of my enemy. False witnesses are risen up against me and such as breathe out cruelty. Don't let the devil have me. Don't let demons have me. Don't let bad spirits overwhelm me. Somebody shout glory. And he ends his prayer asking God to be his keeper. And then he steps back over into the realm of affirmation. Somebody shout glory from affirmation. Thank God through prayer and then back to affirmation and it comes to the text. Uh, thank God that we read at the outset of this message uh, and he opened up his mouth uh, and said, I, I had fainted unless I had believed uh, 
to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. What do you mean, David? What do you say, David? He said, what would what would have become of me had I not believed that I would see the Lord's goodness in the land of the living? Somebody shout glory out glory and then I hear the common English Bible to bring out that verse another way it says but I have sure faith that I will experience the Lord's goodness in the land of the living and the Lord told me to tell somebody you're gonna make it through this I wish I could preach today open up your mouth put it in the comment line uh, and tell your brother and sister uh, say we will uh, we'll make it through this uh, somebody shout glory uh, I believe uh, I wish I could preach uh, I believe uh, oh I feel my help uh, can I close here uh, I believe uh, I wish I could hear, I wish I could hear church shouting in my ears. I don't have but a handful of people here in this room, but I got a congregation sitting out yonder somewhere in virtual church space. Would you throw back your head and say, I, I still, I still believe that I will. It's been rough, but I still believe. I've been down and out, but I still believe. I got pain in my body. I may have picked up the virus, but I still believe. My house has been top turvy, but I still, I still have faith. I still got hope. I still got my trust. And I heard him sign off. He said, wait on the Lord be of good courage and he will he will strengthen thine heart wait 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 I say wait I say I'm talking to you wait on him wait on him wait on him wait on him wait 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 Uh, I'm going to trust in the Lord. I'm going to trust. I'm going to trust till I die. Yeah, I'm going to trust. I'm going to trust. I'm going to trust clapping your hands. I'm going to stay on the battlefield. I'm going to I'm going to stay on the battlefield right now. Yeah, I'm going to stay on the battlefield. I'm going to stay on the battlefield. Yes, I am. I'm going to do I have any soldiers out there? Watch the praise team. They're going to start marching like soldiers. I'm going to stay on. Pick them up and put them down. Yes, I am. I'm going to stay on the battlefield till I I'm going to stay on. Clap your hands and praise it. Clap your hands and praise it. Oh, bless his name. Oh, bless his name. Hey. Bless his name, bless his name. Excuse me for tuning up. I ain't supposed to do all this tuning up in each church. Virtual church. I'm going to be talking most weeks. I got happy. Excuse me tonight. I just need some folk up in here. So. Ooh, 
I can't wait till y'all get back to church. I need some people to shake this mic to and tell them I got a feeling that everything's going to be all right. No. He come out by my side, But this is the best. This is the best. This is the best. Christ in your life. I want you to call these numbers. This is altar call. We got to go. I've held you longer than I intended. About 19 minutes over what I planned. But my good God from Zion. Amen. Why, why you do all that, Bishop? Because I'm waiting on the Lord. <laughs> this is altar call. This is altar call. Come on, call, call the prayer lines. You need prayer tonight. You need a touch tonight. You're looking for uh, a church to be a part of. You want to be a member? Read Apostolic Faith Temple, Mount Zion Apostolic Church. Call the respective numbers: three one three area code for Detroit, three one seven area code for Indianapolis. Call us right now. You're backsliding. You want to be reclaimed. You're somebody that doesn't know the Lord fully, and you want to know Him fully and understand what you need to do. You can get the Holy Ghost tonight. Call that prayer line. Tell Him I want the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Call that prayer line. Tell Him I want to be baptized in Jesus' name. We'll work it out. You that are with somebody that already knows the Lord, they can pray with you right now to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, and they can even baptize you. I have deputized them. They know anything about Jesus. I've deputized them to baptize you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. All you got to do is go get in the bathtub, put some water in it, and say in Jesus' name, repent in your heart. God will wash away your sins. You can get the gift of the Holy Ghost. I'm not going to trouble you with no baptismal formula. Amen. Just in Jesus' name. That's all that matters. You got some technocrats that say it's got to be in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. No, baby. God have highly exalted him and given him a name. Y'all in here. Jesus will work. Jesus. Did y'all hear what I'm saying? Whatsoever you do in word or deed, do it all how? In the name. In the name. That's all that matters. Jesus will work. Come on. If you need Christ, call us. You need to be saved, call us. You're looking for church affiliation, call us. You don't have to live in Detroit or Indianapolis to be a member of our church. You can be part of our virtual membership. Call us and we'll walk you through those steps. I'd be honored to be your pastor and this church family would be honored to have you as a part of our great apostolic Mount Zion church family. Last call, we're waiting on you. Thank you for your patience tonight. We're waiting on you. We're waiting on you. We're waiting on you. I know somehow we get ready to go. And I know some way we're going to make it. I'm sorry, y'all forgive me. I just feel like going on through here tonight. Can we say it together? No matter, no matter. No matter what the test. And whatever comes. Whatever comes the way. What y'all say? That's what I'm saying on Sunday evening, April 26, 2020, in the 6 p.m. service. Guess what? With Jesus, you still worshiping the Lord? Come on and stand up. We get ready to dismiss. Things will. I wish I could hear in your living room. Open up your mouth and say. Y'all better, y'all better sing, Prince D. Come on, take it, Sister Angela, and say, I know, I know somehow that I know, I know some way we're gonna make it. We're gonna make it. Y'all better say it, Prince D. Just walk with me, no matter what the test. Yeah, hey, come on. No Praise team with who on our side? With Jesus, with Jesus on our side. We things will. Things will work out. Now. We gotta go home. Can I hear you say? Can I hear you say? We gonna make it. We gonna make it. Oh, I need some.
worshipers. I need you to worship in your family room. Worship in your kitchen. Throw your hands up and say, Y'all messing with me. We gonna make it. We gonna make it. We're gonna make it. Let's take it from the top one more time. I know. I know. I know. Yeah. I know somehow. We get ready to go. And I know way. We gonna make it. No matter what the test, COVID-19 or anything else, no matter what the test, in spite of what you've been through, no matter what my way, we're going to make it. The Lord told me to tell you, I'm on your side. Open your mouth, open your mouth and say, I got to let the team go home. 
I feel like having church. I feel like shouting. I feel like dancing. I feel like running. I feel like jumping. But we got to go. Bye bye, control room. Shut us down. We're gonna make it.